Ladies and gentlemen, live on BT Sport Box Office, and we welcome those of you watching in the United States on ESPN+. Plus. Let's now welcome to the ring our main event participants. First, the challenger from Belfast, Northern Ireland. He is a former two-weight world champion. fights are ever. We'll see. And now let's welcome to the ring the defending world champion from Leeds, England, Josh the Leeds Warrior, Warrington!
Josh Warrington in the colours of his beloved Leeds United now makes his walk to the strains of the Kaiser Chiefs. These two lads, Josh Warrington and Carl Frampton, the pride of their respective cities. Josh Warrington, not too many people who gave him a chance of beating Lee Selby to take the IBF title at Elland Road. But he did it, and he did it quite brilliantly. Is he going to have enough, though, to repel Carl Frampton? We have an extraordinary atmosphere, as I've said, here in Manchester. This one of the most eagerly awaited fights of the year, and it has all the makings of an absolute classic. You see, the older man, Carl Frampton, reach advantage and height advantage to Josh Warrington. But Frampton, the harder puncher, Warrington has fitness, an extraordinary commitment, but is that going to be enough to trump the boxing skills and the punching power of Carl Frampton? That's what they're fighting for, the IBF championship belt. Sean O'Hagan with Josh Warrington, Carl Frampton, the belt is what he wants. He wants to get right back where he feels he belongs, at the very top of the pile. The scene is set, our master of ceremonies awaits, and official introductions coming up. Here's Thomas Driver. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our featured bout. It is scheduled for 12 rounds, and it will be for the IBF Featherweight Championship of the World. Brought to you by Frank Warren on behalf of Queensberry Promotions, along with their great sponsors, 32 Red and Foot Asylum. It is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, Board Representative Robert W. Smith, along with the International Boxing Federation, President Daryl Peoples, Supervisor Roberto Rodea. Our three judges scoring on a 10-point must system will be Michael Alexander of England, Alex Levin of the United States, and Matteo Montella of Italy. When the bell rings, our referee in charge, third man of the ring will be Steve Gray of England. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the time has arrived! Live from the Manchester Arena here in Manchester, England, this is our main event of the evening! <laughs> Introducing to you first the challenger fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing blue with gold and weighed in at eight stone, 13 pounds. Coming to us from Belfast, Northern Ireland, he brings a professional record consisting of 26 wins, just one defeat with 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former unified super bantamweight world champion, the former WBA super world featherweight champion, and the current WBO interim featherweight champion of the world, Carl the Jackal Brampton! And his opponent across the ring in his main event. He is the defending world champion fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing blue with yellow and weighed in the same as his opponent. Eight stone, 13 pounds. Hailing from Leeds, Yorkshire, England. He is undefeated with 27 wins. Six of his wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the reigning and defending IBF 
featherweight champion of the world, Josh, the Leeds Warrior, Warrington. Okay, boys, if a cold blade, you take one step back. Don't throw any punches on the back of the head. Protect yourselves at all times. Touch goes. Good luck, lads. A lot of respect between these two lads all the way through the build-up. But that kind of ends now, because this is it. A great domestic showdown, the IBF featherweight world title. Is Warrington going to retain, or will Carl Frampton move back towards his dream? Early stages could be absolutely instructive as to how this fight might actually go. Well, we always say it's, it's about work rate with Josh Warrington, but he showed a different, a different side to his game against Lee Selby, where he was the busier fighter, but he didn't rush in like we thought he had to do. And, and, for, and also for Carl Frampton, you know, the heavier hand of the two tend to think that if you make a busier guy feel your power early, it just makes him a bit more tentative to mount his attacks. Yeah, Frampton is the man with the power, but he's the older man, and is he able to rat fight for three minutes of every round? Warrington has never been down, amateur or pro. Good jab there from Warrington. Stepping behind it as well. See, he's not a big puncher, but I, don't, I, but I think he's... You, know, you feel him, I think you feel him. He's not a tippy tappy type, type of guy. There's enough way to earn, earn his respect. That's good there from Warrington. And again, good right hand. Good early pressure from the champion, back comes Frampton. Oh, he's caught him! Big left hand from Warrington! What a start to this fight! And he's going looking for Frampton right away and lands a big right hand as well. My goodness, what a start! He's still in trouble here, Frampton. His legs have stiffened, he's still feeling the weight of it, and Frampton's going to have to dig in here. He is going to have to find a real fighting resolve because Warrington has come out here in this opening round and come very close to absolutely mugging him. Unbelievable stat. And even when Warrington even when Frampton was throwing, Warrington was more than happy to keep throwing. And again here, good body shot there from Warrington. Brilliant start from Warrington. Still a minute to go in this opening round. Still a bit dazed as well, I think, here, Carl Frampton. His legs are steady, but I think his head's not quite there yet. Well, Warrington will see more closely than anybody if that's the case. Every second that passes, Frampton will recover and regain composure. But if he worried about or wondered about the power of Josh Warrington, he knows all about it now. And again, a good left hook to the chin there from Warrington that Frampton felt. Frampton's landing with some good shots himself, but Warrington's just shaking him off and swinging away. What an extraordinary start to the fight. Good jab again from Warrington, closing seconds of the opening round. And a massive round for the champion. What about that for a start, Barry? What? Takes your breath away. Absolute dream start there for Josh Warrington. Winning the round was one thing, no one thought he'd be, he'd be, he'd be rocking Fanta on the, on the heels of his boots. Sean O'Hagan here, Thanks his Josh father with Josh come. Warrington. Off a fan. Fan, let him come, then go. Yeah, simple as that, Josh. Don't blow yourself out. Well, let's look again We've at how he's started climber. to unload on Frampton. See, it's where yeah, when Frampton moves to his right, left that's left. when he's at his weakest, and, and Warren just followed him wrong, got him on the ropes, and then just started going. And even though Frampton lands with a good shot, and a couple of good shots, it's Warren who got, got the grip in his teeth there, the physical strength. So we never really, we never really talked about physical strength. Talk about power and work rate, but not that one of them might be actually stronger than Frampton. Well, first round, no doubt about where that one's gone. 
11 still to go, though. All the experience and ring craft of Carl Frampton is going to be needed. Great advice in the corner there from, from Sean O'Hagan. Faint, let him throw, then go. Little step back, then go again. A bit like he did with Lee Selby. From the age of 13, he was brought up by his dad alone. Josh Warrington with his two brothers. Sean O'Hagan, sometimes, sometime taxi driver. It's a bit too much grease there on the forehead. Oh, OK. Used to work the doors as well. Not particularly well, according to him. He said they used to get filled in on a regular basis to earn a few quid to feed them. <laughs> The right hand there from Josh Warrington also. Frampton just can't find his range yet. Well, he's beating beating Frampton to the punch at the moment, out jabbing him. Frampton got to get into some sort of a rhythm. And waiting for Frampton to commit himself. Good left hook there from Carl Frampton. But he's still very tentative to let his hands go. Bit of head going in, and Steve Gray straight away on Frampton's case. Better from Frampton. Oh, that's at the right time, isn't it? Good, uh, good from Warrington again, though. Making Frampton cover up. Frampton trying to fire back off those ropes. Oh, lovely shot. What an oh, intense shot. Right from Warrington, he's hurt Frampton. He's holding on again, and Frampton's in trouble. Is he going to go? Warrington thinks he is, he's trying to take him out here in the second. And Frampton's on stiff legs. Another big left hand from Warrington. Frampton has to somehow buy time, has to recover. And he holds on and somehow stays aloft, somehow stays upright. Well, the fight is fair at the front of the neck, and he was gone. And he's still not recovered properly. What a start this has been from Josh Warrington, the champion. Unbelievable stuff. But Frampton is still there. He has that class, he has those boxing skills that they're being taken away from him at the moment. Last few seconds of the second round and another massive round for Josh Warrington. Taking too much out of you. Let him no. fucking empty his tank. Look after yourself. Think defense when he's letting his hands go. Don't fucking come Apologies back. for some of the language oh. there, but you can understand the desperation in the words of Jamie Moore. See, from the one of the throwing, he's working the body, and Frampton's staying nice and compact and trying to hold. But then once he starts throwing, there's a big gap there. One of them just doesn't stop throwing. It's like a whirlwind. And even though he's taking shots, he just keeps throwing. And, and there was an uppercut in there somewhere. That really got oh, that right hand over the top. That really got Frampton. And I left it there as well. I know Frampton stayed there from that. I'll never know. He's fighting like a man possessed, Josh Warrington. Oh, good, Josh Warrington's doing. You can't fault Frampton. He's literally done know where he is. And he's just swinging like a lunatic. Not looking to, not looking to survive. Third round. All Josh Warrington, the IBF champion so far. Carl Frampton quickly off his stool and wants to meet fire with fire, but it has to be educated pressure. Frampton again waiting, waiting. And Warrington also waiting, waiting for Frampton to commit himself.
It's the sound of the Leeds fans you can hear predominantly at this stage. Oh, good right hand there from Frampton. But again, the Warrenden takes it well and starts edging forward. Well, he has got a granite chin. Maybe Frampton's best punch so far, only a single shot, though. Well, we always felt that it was the front that had to make his top, make one of the fittest forward early, just to make him think about rushing into attacks. And it was the other way round, yeah, wasn't it? People say Warrington can't punch. Well, we were saying he punched out to get your respect, but not, you know, and I think, that, I think that's still right. He's going looking for him again. Frampton showing good footwork, getting away, lands a good right into the body. What we did say about these two fighters, they will commit. And they've shown that already. Oh, great right hand again from Warrington. Frampton took it so well, though. He's just not allowing Frampton any space to, to sort of get any purchase on his punches. Frampton with a little bit of marking underneath the left eye. He's starting throwing some feints of his own here, Carl Frampton. He's really got to think on his feet, got to work this guy out, Carl Frampton. That was good for one of them. He's a little bit too far away, but blocking and countering him with the same hand was a... I think it would be a good thing, especially with it when one of the front throws that left hand. Just blocking and throw that right hand over the top, nice and sharp. Much quiet around this one so far. The Leeds United anthem reverberates around the Manchester Arena. Been a better round for Frampton, he has regrouped. Has he done enough to win the round? Mm. Close to him, John, isn't he? Where's my water? You've got, you've got to be aware that he's looking for that fucking left up all the time. Nobody really expected it to start like this. 20,000 or so here in the Manchester Arena, loving what they're seeing. That's the best punch that Carl Frampton has landed to date, that right hand. We had a fantastic early start to the round, Carl Frampton. But then again, Warren, and then you know, halfway through the round, splits his teeth and just lets the punches go. Look at that for a shot. Could he split them? No, I didn't split him, John. I, I think it was, it was Frampton's best round, but I still thought that Warrenders did enough to warrant the, the share of it for me. Second round four. Into the fourth round. Well, after that whirlwind start from Carl, from Josh Warrington, Carl Frampton looking to narrow the gap, to box his way into this. Good jab there from Warrington again. He steps behind it as well, doesn't he? So it gives him a, a bit more weight on the shot, but also he can, he can push back off, get away from distance. So many people thought it would be Frampton who would make the fast start and yeah, that it would yeah, be Warrington yeah. coming on strong the longer the fight went. Oh, that's good there from Frampton, you're correct, John, that's what, that's what we saw it. Watch ahead there, Frampton. Good body shot, though, from Josh Warrington again. Left hand as well from Frampton, oh, and a nice, solid right hand. Yeah. Fantastic right hand there from Frampton. Again, though, Warrington didn't barely blink. Absolutely couldn't continue as it did in the first two rounds. And it's become altogether more measured now. There's a nice right hand from Warrington.
Good job there, though, from Frampton. Another good body shot from Frampton and good elusive skills as well. Just got to be careful with that step back because one of them keep throwing shots. Good foot movement there from Carl Frampton. Yeah, much better boxing from the Irishman. They'll have done their homework. Very much so on the skills of Josh Warrington and know all about how to negate them. But he just negated the rush there by just dipping low. Well, good left hand from Warrington. And they go toe to toe once again in the closing stages of this fourth round. That's a left hook he pulls there from Frampton, though. Well, on the throw, but it and gloves out. That's a good right hand from, from Warrington. I didn't see the low shot. No, I didn't either, and uh, Warrington feels that was the wrong call. Well, that was, for the most part, Carl Frampton boxing beautifully. Warrington coming on strong in the closing stages, but much better for Frampton here with Jamie Moore. Yeah, don't get brave, don't try and trade with him because you're pissing him. When you take him to your level, yeah. he can't stay with you. When you come down to his and stand the trade, yeah. he's trying to make it simple because he can't poke you up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah? So don't fucking come down here with him, keep him up there with you. Yeah? Good right hand there from Frank, just timing that really well. Just getting a little angle, leaning over to the left a little bit. Again, good body shot moving right. Just gotta be careful with that lean back. Get that spot on with the, being the shorter arm fight of the two. Much better boxing there for Frampton. Seemingly regained composure. So Frampton probably narrowed the gap in that fourth round. Barry just edging it to Josh Warrington at this stage. Just by the single point, the third round, so difficult to score. That's a work on that swelling beneath the left eye of Carl Frampton, not a problem at this stage. Needs to get a high tempo again. Josh Warrington, the slow pace would seem to suit. Carl Frampton. Oh, good left hook there from Warrington on the right hand. And, and he looks movement. a bit stunned again, Frampton. What well, Warrington's doing, he's moving around to his right. So Frampton can't throw back, it's really clever. Oh, good right hand over there from Frampton, catching one of them coming forward. Don't put a dent in him, though. Frampton, remember, by three years, the older man, probably with more miles on the clock. Good job there from Frampton, and again. Oh, well, a body shot there from Warrington with the right hand. Nothing clear landing there. Frampton relying on boxing skills. Oh, good shot from Warrington. And the body shot. Oh, they were pushing down on the neck there and, and, and hitting Warrington. Warrington trying to show that physically he's the stronger man. And he's trying to bully Frampton back again. Frampton oh, nice digging in a couple of decent body shots of his own. 
Both landing a good left hook there as well. The intensity when they unleash like this is almost frightening. Well, the weight's all coming from Frampton, but I just, it's not, it's not from a dent in Warrington, and I think he's, for me, I think he's outworking him again. He is. He is. Good touch of gloves at the end of it. The respect continues, but did Warrington take that round? Yeah, for me, John. For that first fucking two minutes, yeah, and then be clinical. What he's doing is waiting for your good body. Yeah. We only want one single to body, right? Yeah. So right. pick it. And have a little look at that one now, Johnny. Yeah. It's all right. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Left up, right, right, no. They're looking for left up, right, and so when he's doing that, when he's got to come downstairs. When he throws that, yeah. you've got to keep dropping your feet. Yeah. Every now and again, I don't mind one up here, but every time you aim round here, it slots that right up the middle. Yeah. Yeah? You've got to keep it tight off and drive it up instead. Okay. Yeah. 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 Warrington ahead on Barry's card. A packed Manchester Arena watches a fight which is developing into something which might, at some stage, if it carries on in what we've seen so far, we might be looking back at it as a real classic. Frampton needs to find more, though, you sense. His dreams of a fight against Oscar Valdez the number the WBO champion or against Leo Santa Cruz the WBA champion all rest on first beating Josh Warrington what's surprising to me is that when they are when they had a close exchange in punches Warrington doesn't look out of place you thought that would be Frampton's home and it's not he's measuring his shots well because Warrington takes a good shot he's just taking it and, and continuing to throw so he has to try and push Warren them back and get him up, get his back to the ropes where he can really generate as much power because he's had to push off on your back when you're when you're squared up on the ropes. Complaining that he got one around the back of the head, Carl Frampton. And the referee agreeing. Good chair from Frampton. a lot of feet before he rushes in now, Warrington. Just needs to try and draw that right hand. That's Frampton's. Good body shot from Carl Frampton, and he it fades just, the left hook. Yeah, he's just slowed the pace on him, hasn't it? It just suits him a little bit better. Good shot. Well timed there from Frampton again, just leaning back with that left hook. Spinning off. So he can't move to his right. When he retreats to his right, it happens to him every time. One of them rushes him. Must be something they've thought, of, thought over and they're trying to implement. And now here comes Warrington again with a terrific intensity. He was clipped by one right hand counter oh, from Frampton, but this is all Warrington now. Trying to fight back off the ropes. Good right hand there from Frank. Left hand, sorry, from Frampton. Got the better of the exchange going to the champion. With all the work there on the ropes was from Warrington, of course. Now it's Frampton trying to apply some, some pressure. But not enough. And when they get into those toe-to-toe -to -toe exchanges. Josh Warrington, for me, looks as though he's getting he's the better of it. Him now. He's tired in him now. You're feeling? Not bad. I want you to say I'm fucking marvellous here. Listen to me. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Easy it now. Legs move here. Hands nice and close. Jab, drop a fade. So two fades attack, boom, back. It can be a fade and then back and then come back. When you get him rolling, you don't smother your own fucking. 
it was a wrong with Frampton was you know, just picking up the points, not, not doing much, just doing a little bit more than Warren, then all of a sudden he gets him on the ropes and just explodes, and he really makes the most of his, of his little opportunity, windows of opportunity, Warren, he really makes the most of it, really does. And just keeps working away, whatever comes back from Frampton, he won't let him off the ropes, and he won't let him throw more than one touch at a time. Round seven. Into the second half of the fight, where most people thought it was going to perhaps, if it went to this point, be Josh Warrington territory from here on. Well, at halfway, Barry's got Josh Warrington with a handy lead into the seventh. There's a big thing. We were talking about a big thing before the fight. Well, Frampton's got to make Warren the feel his power. I think he has. I just think Warren can take it. He has got an absolute extraordinary chin. That's how Barry's got it. By three points in Josh Warrington's favour. To think I've only given one round to Frampton out of six is unbelievable. To think that how good of a boxer that he is. Warrington out thoughts, I have thought. From Lee Selby, and is he out thinking Carl Frampton? Well, they, well, to be fair, they get the underrated Sean O'Hagan there, the game plans with him and his, him and, and Josh. You know, Nick Manners, of course, as well. They get they, they, that's no one ever talks about how they, their ring IQ and how they get their game plan spot on. Frampton has been down in fights before. Somebody somewhere in the dim and distant might remember Josh going down as an amateur, but there's no record of it. Oh, it's nice and certainly not, certainly not as a pro. Good body shot there from Frampton, but we take back by Warrington. It's a good little spell, maybe, for Frampton, but Warrington has other ideas. He has to ship a big left hook, but look at the way he just will not be denied. I'll tell you something, when they get these, these exchanges, Frampton might be the bigger puncher, but Warrington will, will not yield first. He's showing that much. The tenacity on the kid. Maybe the biggest punch, big, bigger puncher, I'm not convinced, actually. Warrington has had Frampton going. Big body shot, and Frampton wants to hold on again. Closing stages of a seventh round, which Frampton really had to win. Needs to stay in contact, did he? Did he? Close round, isn't it? Very close round indeed. Just edging, maybe, were you, to Frampton there, Barry? Only because of the early work, John, but when they did go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, again, I think, you know, he's not be good shots, Frampton, but Warren just keeps fighting him back, and he's the one pushing him back as well. But I still do think that, see, you see there, left, probably the better shots in that exchange did come from, overall, came from uh, Carl Frampton, but Warren will most stop throwing. He, he, Frampton's got to stop throwing first. He just keeps bringing those shots in, takes them on the chin, keeps fighting back. So Barry's got it. If you pick up the odd X-rated word in the corners, or R-rated word, or whatever we call it. Apologies, I guess, but it is certainly uh, absolutely fascinating and fiercely committed fight so far. And in the heat of the moment, they forgot to put Carl Frampton's gun shield in. Frampton is going to have to produce rounds now 
as good as those that he found in the first fight against Leo Santa Cruz. He's going to have to shot. produce some absolutely top-class boxing if he's going to prevail here. Good, good oh. shot from, from, from uh, Warrington, Warrington, right hand. And the left as well. Good body shot and a left hook there from Frampton. They go toe-to-toe -to -toe again. He just can't deter Warrington, though, can he? You know, he's landing with some really good shots, enough to make you back up or hold on or cover up, and Warren just keeps fighting back. Frampton come, trying to come on strong here in this eighth round. He's good there from Frampton. A little bit more, just slightly more quality in his work, maybe, in those little exchanges. Body shot as well. And Warrington just giving a little bit of ground. Well, Frampton and his team believe that Josh Warrington wouldn't be able to replicate what he produced at Allen Road when he won the title. And Frampton now is really digging in. Good work from the Irishman, but back comes Warrington. Oh. And a little bit of swelling around the right eye of Josh Warrington now, I think. But also a big smile on his face. That was a big burst as well from Frampton. You could feel it, you could see he felt it physically as well. With a real effort there. Oh, question marks about whether he can sustain it for three minutes of a round. Warrington just allowing him to take a little breather. Two of them landing almost simultaneously with heavy shots. Good job there, Warren Frampton. Warren should have come back there, Warren, then he made Frampton miss. Frampton really digging in. He is having to go absolutely into the well, Carl Frampton. Back comes Warrington again. Another tremendous round. What a great three minutes. Frampton dominating the early exchanges and maybe having the better quality punches. Yeah, I thought you went, I thought you went the wrong when they, when they were letting go. I think the better punches were coming from, for the most part, from Carl Frampton. He started off strong and then when. When Josh did decide, Warren decided to mix with him. I still felt for the most part that what Frampton had the better of it. But he still had me able to hurt him. It's fantastic stuff, isn't it? Really, it's just toe to toe, but isn't it? no one looking to hold on. Right in that centre of that ring, just wheeling away. It's a fantastic right hand there from Frampton. And the uppercut, and Warren just doesn't even blink, just fires back. Great stuff. Tremendous fight here at the MEN Arena. Four rounds to go. It's Frampton coming back into it. Certainly, it looks to us as though he may have won the last couple of rounds to narrow the gap. Yeah, but that seventh round was very close. Either way. That's how Barry's got it. Quiet start to the round. Probably going to be happy. We didn't quite connect with our right hand there, Frampton. Oh, it's lovely from Warrington. Lovely one, two, right on the centre of the guard. Good body shot there from Frampton and the right hand. Two of them trading quality shots in this ninth round. Fatigue's got to be setting in for both men. 
who's going to be the fitter? Oh, good there from Warrington, lovely work, and the uppercut again. Great work from Warrington. Brampton has to absorb another crushing right hand. Is he, sometimes he chops, he has that left hand low, but he, bring, he throws it out a bit sloppy and he gets to pay the price with that right hand there from one of them. Good from Frampton over there. Well, look at Lowe Warrington continues to fire back. Oh, lovely. Good work there, Josh Warrington. Frampton gave a lot in the eighth round. In the ninth, is he just struggling to maintain that sort of intensity? Nice fire from Warrington there, little right hand skipping away. The right hand there, old Warren Frampton. That's better nice. from Frampton, but look at Warrington responds instantaneously and tries to bully Frampton back. Oh, that's good. Good, oh, good body shot from both. These are the punches which really sat strength. This is all about conditioning now. The lovely left hook there. You can see Frank is absolutely knackered. Lovely left hook there from Warrington. Warrington round, I reckon, that one. And has he now withstood all that Frampton can throw at him? He's absolutely fucked. He is. You make your eye out. Well, he's running out of fucking bags now, mate. He's absolutely fucked. Well, you heard what they were saying, you might not like the way they were saying it, but they reckon that Carl Frampton is absolutely all in. He, well, he had a person in the middle of that round, and you can see all the effort went into his work there, Frampton, he was blowing. And one of them has just got such a tremendous engine. It's a Frampton still fight, Frampton won't stop firing back until you get, no, as long as you got an ounce of breath in his lungs, but one of them just, no, just will, will not stop throwing punches, just that works him every time. It's really good work. Okay, second scorer, three. You okay? Yeah? Second down. Is he just oh, about okay. spent? Carl Frampton has three rounds left to probably turn this fight around and come from behind. We reckon that Warrington well in charge and Jamie Moore saying to Carl Frampton, are you okay? Are you okay? Before he sent him out for this tenth. Shot there from Frampton. Well, he looked absolutely knackered, didn't he, at the end of that round? He did. But what difference? What difference can a minute have made? Good Frampton, job. Frampton was quoted as shorter price with some bookies as nine to four on, which. Struck me as an extraordinary misjudgment, but these guys take their take their information from various sources, and that's the way they saw it. At times, the jab from one of them, where he steps in and out of it, in and out of the distance, is lovely. Oh, it's good work. We go from Warrington again there. He's looking very much the fresher man in there now. Nice left hook there from Cal Frampton. Well, as you said in the last round, he's going to keep on fighting until it is absolutely oh, knocked out of him. Took an uppercut there, it's, John. It's being knocked out of him now. Warrington bullies him back onto the ropes again. Some engine on these two, especially Warrington. There was a film made about Josh Warrington on his way to the title, fighting for a city. And the Leeds fans are in full voice and are very, very proud of their man. Still, Frampton tries to work away to the body, tries to bring in uppercuts. He will not yield. He's trying to place his shots here, Frampton, but being old hustled here by Warrington. Toe to toe again. He's shattered, Frampton. He's absolutely shattered. 
bellowing advice from the Frampton corner. Trying so hard to dig those shots. He's putting everything into every punch, I think. How much has he got left? Warrington ahead on our cards and still, as you can see, with a spring in his step. Nice jab there from Warrington again. And again. To, to take one lovely one back from Frampton, though. Frampton continues to throw some quality shots, but Warrington is fighting like a champion. He, he's, he's doing tremendous. He's, he's holding his feet and he's mixing it with Frampton. He's getting the better of time for hustling him. If up close where you thought this would be Frampton's territory. Like, I think Frampton's placing his shots really well. Then Frampton, no, Warrant, and he's landing some good shots, but Warrant just keeps throwing. And they're not, one is not just throwing willy nilly, he's like he's trying to place the shots as well, just at the higher work rate. Tremendous stuff. The tenacity and the desire. It's a great shot as well from, from Frampton going back, as well going with his credit. But one of them still showing that great chin, just running through it. Two rounds to go. Two rounds in which Carl Frampton has got to have massive success. Ten seconds, corner. Josh Warrington can sense his second massive win of the year. Two rounds to go, we're in the 11th. Frampton has regrouped and again looked absolutely spent as he went back to his corner at the, at the end of the last round. But his powers of recovery, you have to really give huge credit. Good right hand from Frampton. I actually thought it was a good jab for Warrington, to be honest. Oh, that's a fantastic lovely jab there from Frampton. Staying nice and low, see, punching up through the guard. Like a 90s crowd, isn't it? No. Yeah. It's a fight that you're happy to have seen. It's great to see two fighters absolutely at the pinnacle of the sport from Britain. Again, just seeing how lovely stepping behind the, the jab there from Warrington. Warrington just been a little bit too fresh for Carl Frampton. Well, I just think he's, he's absorbed the power of Frampton, but he's probably you know, used to people not just accept, uh, taking it, except for Santa Cruz, taking it and firing back. The incredible opening that Josh Warrington produced in those first two rounds surely must have shocked Frampton. Unbelievable start, it really was. Oh, they're looking there, Frampton, it's a good little move, that was a little shimmy, didn't quite come off. The chants are going up again from the Leeds fans. He just did that in and out stiff now. Josh Warren did good right hand. Belfast fans have travelled far and wide and vociferously and passionately in support of Carl Frampton. But is he going to taste defeat here tonight? He may well need a knockout and it doesn't look as though it is going to come. Winging in that right hand with an air of desperation, Carl Frampton. Oh, good left hook there, he's just stumbled in back there, Warrington. But look at Frampton fight back. If you're watching this unmoved by the passion and commitment of these two men, then frankly, you're watching the wrong sport. Josh Warrington is heading towards the winning line and looks as though he's taken another round there. I just think just the engine on the kid is something else, it really is. 
I was talking about Steve Robinson in the 90s, and Warren's been a better fighter than that, but he has that sort of engine. Yeah. He's always hooking. Let's try and keep it straight up. Yeah. Especially that pop ass. Hook straight. Yeah. And then finish the jab. Yeah. Try not to be in his pocket now. I understand you might have to fight. Trying to give wise words, he's got to knock him out though. He can't match you for feet. Yeah. Don't let him win the left. Don't let him win the left. Don't let him have round for you, man, right? Sean O'Hagan kind of has open house at his place after contests. Reckons he's cooking for about 20 people for Christmas dinner after this. Assuming that he wins, and what a lovely moment there between the two guys. Assuming Warrington wins, I think half Leeds is going to want to be there. I just got to say, you see them touch gloves, I'll oh, go right hand there from Warrington. You don't need all this bad blood to produce a fantastic contest. There's uh, barely uh, been a bad word between them right the way through. Huge amounts of respect between the two fighters. I think Carl Frampton thought that he was at a different level and that he thought he'd be a superior boxer to clash heads. And is he cut? He's certainly stunned. You see a swelling there on the left-hand side of his head coming up. Times you wonder whether Josh Warrington's head is actually made of bone. He just seems yeah. to make it, just seems yeah. to be able to take absolutely anything. So he just takes that one shot with a bit of bit of speed, bit of snap. You don't see it. Oh, good, good uppercut there from Warrington. Great right hand counter, and Frampton's in trouble again. Trying to fight back on instinct now, the Irishman. Just as he come forward, he squared his feet, and Warrington just whipped in that uppercut. And Warrington up on his toes, looks fresher and so much brighter. Hardly looks in comparison to Frampton as though he's been in a fight. It has been a stirring performance. Frampton keeps coming forward, keeps trying to find the one big payoff punch. If you've spent your money to be with us tonight, good investment, oh. because everybody who's spent money to be here, to be in this arena, will consider that every penny is well invested. It has been absolutely tremendous. Frampton has been knackered for about four rounds and always kept throwing, I don't know. But this Warrington, it's, it's just, he's almost, he's just not human, and the engine on the kid's something else. It's time, I think, for a few critics and a few armchair critics to wake up to the fact that Josh Warrington is a little bit special. Good left hook there from Frampton, and again, and again. Nice jab, though. Just As we move up. towards the last ten seconds of the fight, still both men trying to wing everything at their opponent, but what a great contest, and surely a great, great win for Josh Warrington. That was a very special fight. Great respect between the two in the build-up, and look at what it means to the two of them. They have shared in a little boxing epic. That was a fantastic fight, it really was. And it went against the trend of what we thought was going to happen. We didn't think Warrington was going to have such a fantastic start. We thought he was going to have to take catch up a little bit. And he was just tremendous throughout. And do you know what? Carl Frampton didn't do too much wrong, John. He landed with good shots, he timed the shots well. He just got all hustled by a guy, and, and tactically as well at, at times. You know, not bamboozled as such, but just confused what was happening with the way, the way Warrington was approaching it. Lovely moment in there as Sean O'Hagan there, father of Josh Warrington, went across to Carl Frampton. He's a big bear of a man, and he gave him a great big bear hug. It takes two to produce a fine fight, and Sean yeah. knows it. Well, look, he's got Jamie Moore, trainer of the year, rightly so. Fantastic job last year. Sean O'Hagan could have easily won it himself, couldn't he? Let's be honest. Well, between them, Josh and Sean have produced two absolutely astonishing performances. Maybe there are a few 
a few Irish diehards who are hoping still that Carl Frampton won this, but I cannot believe it's the case. Josh Warrington, as he was at Elland Road here in Manchester, has been just outstanding. He has, he really has. And I was talking about Steve Robinson earlier from the 90s, and I just said one of them might just be one of those fighters who keeps beating guys who he's not meant to beat. Just keeps, just keeps producing the goods and better and better and better. And, and I think that's the case now. He, just, he was just outstanding tonight, he really was. He is unquestionably right up there with the best fighters in this country. Maybe he is the best. And to be honest, what, I'm going to say it again, Frampton never boxed a bad fight. He's also, I don't think Frampton underperformed. I don't, I don't think that there's any excuse like that. I just think, you know, he got a, a, got a hustle at times and the, the places where he was meant to be comfortable, which he was, and he was landing with good shots, Warrington just took him and fired back, and I think that shocks everyone. Well, Barry eventually getting it on his card by a wide margin for Josh Warrington, the pride of Leeds. The two fighters are being drawn to centre ring with Steve Gray, the referee, and Thomas Triber is waiting to give the results. And here are some of the fantastic moments from that last round no, you... when unquestionably Josh Warrington finished the stronger and they know that they were special tonight. Even you just seen just seen a little thing when he was moving around the target there one, one to his right. And it's very clever. And you don't really see it. It's there's subtle things that he doesn't get credit for. Carl Frampton, an outstanding boxer. He's come up against a younger man, a fitter man, maybe a stronger man, and certainly, in his own way, an outstanding boxer as well. We're assuming that Josh Warrington has won this and won it commandingly. The referee is asking for the crowd to salute both men, and all around the Manchester Arena, people are standing up and cheering. It's been that sort of a night, that sort of a fight, and here now is Thomas Triber. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing here at the Manchester Arena, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Michael Alexander scores it 116 to 113. And both judges, Alex Levin and Mateo Montella, score it the same, 116 to 112. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. And still, IBF featherweight champion of the world, Josh, the Leeds Warrior, Warrington. Once again, the jubilation is for Leeds and for Josh Warrington. Carl Frampton held him aloft to salute him himself and to say that he has been a great fighter, but he now knows emphatically that Josh Warrington is also great. And on the night was clearly by margins of four points on two cards, three points on the third, were big wins and emphatically for Josh Warrington. We're going to hopefully get straight into the ring for interviews. Ronald, Ma Ronald McIntosh is up there with the microphone poised and Josh Warrington is now alongside him. Let's go into the ring. Josh Warrington, as you pose for the photographers with that IBF belt that you've just successfully defended for the first time, just put into words what this performance means to you. You just played your part in what was an all-time classic in the featherweight division against a two-weight world champion. Put into words what this victory means. Well, first of all, uh... Ronald, I, I want to say uh, a big thank you to this one inside of me. It takes two to make a, a fight like that, and uh, hats off to Carl Frampton there. I've always been a fan. I'm still a fan now, you know. It's just business, and we had 12 rounds, and listen, the fans made a fantastic atmosphere tonight, and uh, listen, I just hope you all enjoyed it, and I think I've made me, uh, I think I've made me Christmas turkey now. <laughs> I'm sure you're looking forward to that Christmas turkey. It's been nothing but sportsmanship in the build-up. There was a warm embrace and afterwards nothing but respect all the way through. The contest fought in a fantastic spirit. When it was all said and done and you were declared the winner and still champion, what sentiments were exchanged between the two of you? 
Uh, he just said to me, I mean, I want to keep it personal, to be honest, uh, to be honest with you. Keep that between me and Carl because that was a little personal moment. But one thing he did say to you, I hope you go on forward and, uh, and unify the division. And, and like you say, it was full respect throughout. And, you know, the shaking of hands there just shows what a top sportsman is. Listen, Carl Crabhampton will go down as one of the best featherweights and super bantamweight champions there has been. Um, it's just an honour that I've shared a ring with him. The contest everybody thought, or a lot of people have suggested you were going to go on the front foot, but you were wary in the first round before launching a furious assault. You did the same in the second. What were the tactics that you and your father worked on and how were you able to implement them so effectively? Well, listen, you're in with a, like I say, to win world champion. I, you know, I'm giving Carl a lot of credit, but he deserves it. And I can't go in here just thinking, you know, even though I'm champion, I'm going to bully him. So you've got to be clever with a, with a thinking fighter like Carl. I've said prior that, um, I've got many, many different game plans what I can bring to the table, and there was a chance when I seen an attack, then I was going to go for it. There were times when I hit him with some corking shots, and, and he took him, and he, he's a very, very hard man. But um, listen, we did what we had to do, and hopefully now people will stand up and, uh, and take note what we're about. Well, Josh, if you just stay with us for a moment, Carl Frampton, please join us. Hasn't been your night tonight, but just listen to the standing ovation you're receiving here from the fans at the Manchester Arena after playing your part in what was an absolutely pulsating contest for the IBF title. Hasn't gone your way. Give us your thoughts on the contest, your performance, and the part that you played in the contest. Uh, George won the fight fair and square, absolutely. I, um, I come in here, I train hard. Absolutely no excuses from me. I was in incredible shape coming into this fight, and the better man won, simple as that. And, I hope he goes on to, to do great things and unify and, you know, I, think, I, I, I like this whole team, they're all, they're all good people and, uh, you know, it just wasn't my night but no excuse for me, I was, I was fit, I was strong, Josh was fitter and stronger and that's the bottom line. How important was that fitness and, strong, fitness and strength in getting you through those first couple of rounds because they looked to be torrid rounds that you endured from our position ringside, how badly hurt were you, how long did it take you to recover? I, mean, I was hurt. I was hurt a number of times in the fight, and whoever whoever says Josh can't punch, you know, I I don't really know what they're talking about. I, he's a quality fighter. Not that I under I didn't underestimate him. That's the wrong thing to say. But he's he's even better than I thought. I trained for a very good fighter, but he's much better than I thought. He's clever. He had a brilliant game plan. He's fit. He's tough. You know, he, he has it all, and he can punch hard. Carl, I know you're in the immediate aftermath of, aftermath of a disappointing defeat, but you said that you only want to be in big fights from now on. Given the way this has gone tonight, what do you think the next step is for you? I have to sit down with my team, man. You know, I have a young family at home. Uh, I've, I've been in this game a long time, and it was a hard fight, you know. I have to sit down. I'm not making no decisions right now, but I have to sit down with my team and, and, and figure out the next move. Well, we look forward to your next move, whatever it is. Congratulations on your part in what has been a classic contest in the featherweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause, if you would, please, for Carl Frampton. Well, Frank, Josh, if you could just join us now, because, Josh, you said that you want this journey to continue. You've had an outstanding 2018, winning the title against Lee Selby as an underdog. You were the champion, but you came into this contest as an underdog, beating a legendary figure like Carl Frampton. What do you want the next step to be? You've talked about going to the States, you've talked about going to Las Vegas, you've got Oscar Valdez returning in March, Gary Russell, WBC champ, Leo Santa Cruz, the WBA champ. What is the next step for you? First of all, I want to enjoy Christmas a bit. You know, it's been a long five months getting ready for this one. I've had a lot going on, you know, moving out, and the film's coming out, I'm a film star, you know. Um, and, and two big fights back to back, they take a lot of building up, it takes a lot out of you mentally. Um, but you know what, I just want to be a part of the big fights. That's why I was straight in with a, a fight like Frampton. I need the big fights to get, up, to get me up for it, you know what I mean? The fights like Oscar Valdez is one that appetise me. And you know, I, I hope that I've won a few more fans over now and if they want to join, my, join on my journey and, and take it stateside, then uh, you're more than welcome to come along. Just before we get to Frank, five years ago, your partner bought you a ticket to watch Carl, Carl Froch and George Groves fight here. You said you want to be a part of nights like that. You've just played a part in a magical night here at the Manchester Arena. How does the experience compare to the vision that you had in your head for all those years? Do you know what? I, I, I'm more nervous building up to like the fights like Amagasa and the Dennis Sealand and the Martinez. The, fun, the ones where you've got to get up there, but now I'm here. 
I had no nerves. I just, you know, there was a little bit of fear because Carl's a big nerve, but I just enjoyed it. And I'll, I'll say one thing: you don't go, you don't have to start bad mouthing, throwing tables at each other, talking on all the bollocks to sell a fight. We showed sportsmanship all the way throughout, and I think that just went down as one of the best fights of the year. So um, you know, it's two sportsmanship can make a great fight, and then uh, I hope the fans up home watched it on BT uh, box office when entertained. We most certainly were. Frank Warren, Hall of Fame promoter. You just put together another terrific contest where you said in the lead up, the fight was the hype. That's proved to be exactly the case. These two men have produced a magnificent contest. What is next for Josh Warrington in this remarkable journey? Well, before we talk about what's next, I've been in this business for a uh, hundred years nearly now. That is the best fight I've ever seen in a British ring. The best world title fight I've ever seen. Two ultimate warriors, top of their game. You remember in years to, go, to come, you'll say, I was there. I was there, Fritz. That was something special that these two guys delivered. And what, what's next? I don't know. He's going to go have a nice rest. Carl's going to have a nice rest, and we'll think about it over the, in the early in the new year. But all I, want to, all I want to think about is how privileged we were tonight to watch this, here and on BT Sport. Well, Frank Warren, Josh Warrington, congratulations on retaining that title with a successful first defence in a terrific contest. Ladies and gentlemen, a final round of applause, if you would, for the man who is still the IBF featherweight champion of the world, Josh Warrington. I'll just say, um, I just want to do this for a little girl I met back in, um, back in August at um, the Leeds Children's Arts uh, Surgery, Leeds LGI Ward, and uh, I promised her after my next fight that I'd do a little floss for her, so... It's for the 10-year-old Ruby. <laughs> <laughs>